Hi friends, this is Leela. Welcome to my React JS course. Now in this video, we will learn about the error boundaries. What are these error boundaries? Normally, if you try to see in our React component, React JS, so these all React components are divided into multiple nested subcomponents. So if you see in the app job and the app dot JS, you are having the sidebar and also the post. The sidebar you will be able to see the navigation like that. You will be able to see the comp nested subcomponents. Why we are maintaining these all subcomponents? So in order to break the larger code into a small small subcomponents, so this will lead to a what it what the what what it will do this will lead to a re reusable code structure. So what will happen is this is sometimes lead to some crashes also. Why? Because because of the due to the problematic JavaScript code. So because of the JavaScript code, invalid API usage or inconsistent all those things. So what it will happen? Is this can lead to unexpected inconsistencies and it can crash the whole app also. So if you have a reference error, a variable reference error, and all those things, it can crash the whole app. So now what we can do is, so these these type of things we can handle these errors gracefully. So React 16 has introduced a new concept that is nothing but the error boundaries concept. So what is this error boundaries components? So these are nothing but a component. Sorry, error boundaries. What it will do is, it will provide a convenient way to log errors while displaying a fallback UI also. So fallback UI to inform the users about the possible issue. Okay, so error boundaries. What it will do? It will provide a convenient way to log uh, to log the error if any error occurs in the component. So it will it will allow us to log the error and also display the fallback UI also. Okay, so now in this video, what we will try to do is we will try to create the error boundary. Normally, what what the error error boundaries are? Error boundaries are nothing but the normal React components only, but these are just acts as a wrapper to catch the errors from the child component. So the component, any component can be a component. Normally, component can be easily converted into error boundary component by defining either two methods: either get derived state from error or the component did catch. Okay, so either either of this one, so either this one or that one. So if you mention this method, so that component will become an error boundary component. Let's try to create one error boundary component. Here I am creating one folder. I am creating error boundary. Okay. Error boundary. Something like error boundary. And here I will try to create a new file. Error boundary.js. So in this error boundary.js, let's try to create a class. Export class error boundary extends component so now you will be having the render so normally this is a normal component you will be having the render so let's try to return do an error occurred okay so i will be displaying like this so this is a normal this is a normal component but i want to make this component as an error boundary component so what we need to do i already told you right if you mention get derived get derived state from error okay so if you mention this one automatically this component will become an error boundary component or this one also you will be having component did catch okay so this will have two parameters that is nothing but the error and the info try to check so these are the two components so if you mention any of these two methods so any method if you mention means this component will become a error boundary component so how to use this error boundary component we'll try to see in this before going to usage what we'll try to see is what is the difference between these two methods get derived state from error and also component did match error component did catch so get derived state from error what it will try when it will try to execute is it will try to execute just before during the render method okay just before during the render method this method will be executed and here you will be the ideal place to update the state so if you want to update the state here you will be updating the state so now component did catch when it will fire is after completely completing the uh, uh, rendering of this one so component did catch will fire so where, why we will be using this component did catch is in order to log any error so if you want to log any error to the database or if you want to send it to the server side you can use the, you can write that code in the component did catch get get error state from error when we will try to use just before during the render it will execute right so in order to update any state or anything so you can use this get derived state from error so you cannot log the errors in this uh, so if you want to send an error message or something to the server means you cannot write this one in the 
in this method why because it is just executed before the render method right so that's why it will may it may take some time to render so that is the reason so we will be uh, we will we will be not writing those type of log messages here but we will be writing in the component did catch so that render will be completed and the back end it will be going on okay so these are the difference between these two get derived state from error and also component did catch so now we will try to see the implementation of this error boundary so now in the app.js let's go to the app.js and here so we need to use it in the use it as a wrapper so for example see let's go to the index.js here we are having right directly we can mention it here error boundary okay so if you mention like this so we already know as this one is a component right so this component here it will be executing so let's try to include this error boundary okay so we have included let's try to see the output if i try to see the output what will be the output here so we are able to see the an error has occurred why it is displaying this one so here we are able to see we are returning the html directly we are returning the an error record directly here so we already know that as this one isn't just a component so in this component is executing so in order to overcome this one what we need to do is just introduce the constructor normally what the people will be doing is constructor okay so here you will be having the props so now here you can use super of props this no need if you want to mention you can mention or not not needed so this dot state i will be using has error so default i will keep it as false okay so this is the thing and here where what i will try to do is if this dot state dot has error if it is having an error just return this one okay if it is not we if we are not having any error just return this dot props dot children we can return directly this one this dot props dot children as what will happen is due to the composition model so whatever the things here we mentioned inside this error boundary it will display everything so if i try to see the output here see we are able to see the output directly now i will keep some i will throw some error here error boundary dot js app dot js we are having right so everything is wrapped under the error boundary dot js so in any component if you are having any rendering problem or anything so now you will be getting an error so you will be getting an error so error boundary will fire let's try to uh, create some error so what i will try to do i will go to the inside the navigation navigation is the innermost component right so now here i will try to remove this one okay now i will execute if i try to refresh this one we are able to get some error and we are able to see some this is some errors we are able to see this one will occur in the development phase so in the development phase we are able to display the react js it, it will be displaying all the errors here if you close this one here right right side top uh, you will be able to have a close symbol it is an overlay actually in the production mode this this one will not be displayed these errors will not be displayed in the production mode so this is up this is uh, visible only in the development mode so here you will be you here you will be able to see so click close to or hit escape to dismiss this message if you dismiss this message you are not seeing anything so what is happening here okay what is happening here so we are not able to display anything why because it is going into the it, it, it is we are we are we it occurred an error so now if you want to display this fallback ui if you want to display this fallback ui somehow we need to make this one as true right so here everything empty empty page it is showing why because so here it is showing this this dot props dot children and and everything uh, there the error has occurred so that is the reason it is showing empty so in order to show this fallback ui what we need to do is so let's try to console here console dot log okay so get get derived error fired okay so i will try to add this one and also what i will try to do is here component did catch fire component did catch fired okay now if i try to refresh this page if i go to the inspect element and if i go here in the console so if i try to see here the console so here you will be able to see all errors so first of all let's try to refresh then we will try to see if i try to refresh here see at the top there see get derived error fired okay so it has fired the get derived error and you will be able to see the component did catch also firing somewhere here i think it 
constructor, constructor called con context consumer. Right? Okay, so we are not showing the error, so that is a we are not showing the error, so that is the reason it is not firing. So now what we'll try to do is so get derived error has been fired. So what we can do here is so we need we can return the updated state. So what I will try to do so return has error true. I will I will try to return this one. So now let's see what will happen. See now you are able to see that get derived error has fired. Okay, and also what we can see is so these are all errors it is showing, and also here you will be able to see get derived error has fired and also the component did catch also fired we try to refresh this one okay so get derived error has fired and also the component did catch also fired so if i close this one you will be you will be able to see that an error occurred see we are now we are able to display the an error occurred here so we are making the updating the state to has error true so this is how we can show this code okay so this is how we can we can show this error boundaries so now if i if i make uh, if i do this one correct so now you will be able to display complete code now we will be able to display the complete code okay so when this error boundaries will be very useful so error boundaries will, will be very useful when we when in the production mode if you want to don't display uh, this type of errors and if you want to lock this type of errors in the component we will be using this error boundary and also if you try to see here we know that the error has been occurred only in the sidebar so the post list doesn't occur so we want to show the post list and if you want to uh, show the error occurred here in this component okay fine so how can we show this one type of things means so here you can add something like error boundary okay so for this one so it will apply to the nearest possible error boundary so now here i can close this one okay here i have applied the error boundary right? now if you try to see if you try to see the output now see the output has changes it will be differently so if i am removing this user edit i am keeping the error so now in the sidebar only the error has occurred so if you try to see here if i close this one see the post list is displaying but here in the side now you are able to see the error occurred right so now this is the way we can restrict some parts of the components and allow some parts of the components to display directly instead of close instead of showing all the empty screen so we can show in the production like this so here we can show an error record or something some problem if you want to show you can show the error there so this is how why why because you will be using the error error, error boundaries in the components in the rendering phase we there will be no option to catch the errors if I, uh, here you will be not able to catch the errors if any problems or any reference variables errors occurs in the render phase you will be not able to catch this so in order to in order to provide the free flow of the data so in order to not to block the everything uh, rendering so we'll be using this error boundaries and also these error boundaries you need to remember that this one will not apply for the uh, what we can say is asynchronous a promise fetch call set timeout set trim set intervals these type of things the error boundary will not apply so for those things if you want to apply you need to use normally javascript try catch methods okay so these things you need to remember so this is the error boundary thing so now for example if you try to see here what could be the errors it will be printing console.log error sorry console.log error we can also see console.log info if you try to see here if you try to so now here we are getting correct right so now if i go into this one if i try to refresh here you will be able to see the component stack and also the error so what are the errors here we are able to see we are able to display it here in this error and the info so this is the concept so if you want to log it into the server side you can log it directly here okay so this is about the error boundary in the react js so error boundary we can apply error boundary to each and every component or otherwise as a whole you can add it in the index.js into the app so that it will go it will traverse to the near closest possible error boundary component it will be having so here the closest possible error boundary is having is here for this sidebar is this error boundary if, if this one closest boundary is not there means it will go to the index.js to the nearest available error boundary okay so this is the concept of the error boundary if you have any doubts or any suggestions please post the comments below to this video and if you like this video please do support me by subscribing to my channel thank you